Hey lovelies, here in Sunflower Guru, we strive to live healthfully, illuminating wonders the natural world has to offer. We invoke thoughtfulness and encourage open minds. We strive to implement healing habits that attribute to the elevation of our daily lives and to share growth in its many forms. There are gems that lay everywhere if you know how to look. We are discussing the coniferous tree Douglas fir. Conifers have pine cones. And going into the depths of what this tree really is, discovering medicinal uses and chemical constituents that make Douglas fir so beautifully healing, cosmetic uses, internal teas, aromatherapy, history, and how we can incorporate this cleansing tree into our daily lives. If you're a skincare fanatic, this will be an amazing oil and hydrosol to incorporate into our daily skincare routines. I specifically use hydrosol almost every single day and the essential oil every now and then when I distill some myself. There is a lot of ground to cover throughout this episode. If there are sections of the podcast that don't connect to you, feel free to skip ahead and listen on. There is a deluge of information to be utilized herein. My goal is to expand knowledge through research present different perspectives, and encourage open minds. Now, before we begin, let's take a deep breath and sit in a moment of stillness. Calm our thoughts, open our minds, and breathe. Let's get into it. There's generally at least one time of the year many Americans have a Douglas fir standing tall in their living rooms. Christmas time. Douglas is commonly used as a Christmas tree due to its speedy growth and fragrant aroma. And absolutely, yes, if we're so inclined, it can be utilized in brewing up a gentle tea, essential oils if you have a still or know a friend that has a still also, and utilize it in the many ways we'll be discussing in this episode. It's a beautiful way to cultivate eternal power in place of the tree landing in a landfill. Let's be sure to identify our trees correctly before making any special brews. There are other trees used as Christmas trees, yet those may be inexorably healing as well. To start off the episode, we're diving into medicinal uses of Douglas fir and chemical constituents that make this tree so beautifully healing. This section is mildly detailed in biochemistry terms and explanations For the purpose of understanding, there's science around this conifer, which has been proven and studied already. Since there are so many chemical compounds with similar attributes, we'll go into depth on some of them while summarizing the rest. Douglas fir is almost entirely composed of chemical compounds with a monoterpene backbone. Functional groups present in Douglas fir essential oil are mainly alkenes, which are groups of carbon atoms connected by double bonds. Douglas fir also contains some alcohols and esters in small quantities. The Faculty of Chemistry in the University of Belgrade conducted research in 2009 on the essential oil of the Douglas fir evergreen tree. They analyzed the oil obtained from hydrodistillation of fresh young needles and twigs by gas chemotography and gas chemotography mass spectrometry. 
and compounds were identified, making 94.26% of the oil. The main components being boronyl acetate at 34.65%, camphene 29.82%, and alpha-peonine 11.65%. We will be going into these compounds in detail. Chemical compositions of any plant in the world depends on the geographic, seasonal, and ecological conditions. Antifungal activity was tested against various fungal species. Fungi most sensitive to Douglas fir essential oil were Fomopsis helianthi, while Penicillium species along with Microsporum canis were most resistant. Compared to commercial fungicidal agents like Bifonazole, Douglas fir demonstrated to hold higher antifungal activity. Let's get into the main chemical compounds. Boronyl acetate, the acetate ester of borneol, retains around 34% of Douglas fir essential oil and lends its piney aroma. A biomed pericother Yulang L conducted an experiment in 2018 finding, quote, our results indicate that boronyl acetate mitigated expression of the pro-inflammatory cytokines. Our results suggested the therapeutic potential of boronyl acetate in patients with atheosclerosis. Another study found, quote, boronyl acetate may be developed as a preventative agent for lung inflammatory diseases, end quote. Along with powerhousing anti-inflammatory qualities, the National Library of Medicine holds colossal, veritable studies on boronyl acetate. Another study in 2017 found that boronyl acetate performed exceptionally well for healing the gut relieved diarrhea and reversed hypopathological changes in the gut. Boronyl acetate strengthened the intestinal mucosal barrier, reduced the amount of pathogenic bacteria, and increased the abundance of probiotics, making it a powerful antibiotic. Neurologically, Boronyl acetate tranquilizes and soothes an agitated autonomic nervous system, useful when one has symptoms of hyperactivity and too much screen time. Boronyl acetate inhibits the trozenase enzyme, an enzyme known for controlling production of melanin, which makes skin darker. Consequently, Boronyl acetate lends a hand in younger, more fair appearance, synergistically soothing and relaxing and supporting tissue health. Moving on to our second chemical constituent, the second isomer of peonine next to beta peonine is alpha peonine, a colorless terpene containing a reactive four-membered ring reserves a woody, green, pine-like scent found in forest trees. Alpha-peonine is readily found in herbs like parsley, dill, basil, rosemary, cannabis, and other citrus plants. Like beta-peonine, alpha-peonine is famous for its anti-inflammatory benefits, helpful in treating arthritis, Crohn's, multiple sclerosis, can soothe agitated skin, reduce oil production on the skin, an analgesic, and has forces against bacteria and viruses. Research finds alpha-peonine acts as a bronchodilator, elevating airways, ameliorating congestion, and nurturing conditions like asthma. Having a strong spectrum of antibiotic properties, it can treat conditions like MRSA. Alpha-peonine is believed to inhibit activity of a certain enzyme that targets neurotransmitters responsible for sending messages to the body. 
inhibits acetylcholine sterase activity in the brain, helping in retaining memories. Calm anxious feelings increase alertness and may alleviate feelings of seasonal discomfort. Vitamin D3 is also known to help with seasonal discomfort if that's something you're dealing with. Alpha-pinene interacts with neurotransmitters similarly impacted by anti-anxiety drugs, such as those in the benzodiazepine class. National Center for Biotechnology has a deluge of articles that strongly study alpha-pinene and its ability to treat cancer on hepatoma carcinoma cells. One test study showed, quote, liver cancer cell growth was inhibited obviously with an inhibitory rate of 79.3% in vitro and 69.1% in vivo, end quote. And supplement and supplement chemotherapy treatments. How astonishing is that, guys? How astonishing is this? This is crazy. Let's stop for a moment and really absorb how astonishing this healing evergreen tree has veritably shown to be. This is one plant which holds such eternity within itself. The potential power to be utilized and to bring health to ourselves, our families, our loved ones. In a world which we live today, we crave healing, connection, happiness, perhaps with exploration to unfamiliar silvered gems such as Douglas fir, we can attain that happiness and reign power over our health again. <sighs> Moving on to our third chemical constituent, the second of the two isomers of pinene next to alpha pinene is an antibacterial monoterpene beta pinene holding an exosilic double bond, colorless, alcohol-soluble, and plays a role as a metabolite, being an intermediate or end product of metabolism. The term metabolite is usually used for small molecules in biochemistry. Similar to alpha-pinene, beta-pinene retains that woody, green, pine-like aroma we love so much while hiking or walking through the forest. Alike alpha-pinene, research studies how the olfactory system in the brain is influenced by aromatic terpenes. Beta-pinene has shown to elevate mood and consolidate anxious and depressive feelings. Our next terpene retains a sweet, citrus, piney wood aroma commonly found in rosemary, pine, and cedar trees. Delta-3 carrying holds cosmic uses cosmetically, utilizing its citrusy aroma, nurturing memory, making it potentially useful in treating Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Simultaneously, elevating mental focus and concentration. Cleansing antibacterial and expectorant qualities make Delta-3 carrying an effective insect repellent at the industrial level. A study in 2007 tested 89 natural compounds for bone disease repair and concluded anabolic activity in Delta-3 carrying and bone metabolism suggested that the use of natural additives to the diet, including essential oils, could have a beneficial effect on bone health. Delta-3 carrying meliorated inflammation Consequently, nurturing symptoms like arthritis, joint pain, fibromyalgia, repairs diseased and damaged bones, benefiting people with osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, and other bone diseases. This bicyclic monoterpene is unique in its power to draw out liquids, making it a useful antihistamine, lightening excessive menstruation or mucus production. Personally, after making the essential oil of Douglas fir, 
it is such a wonderful beauty to put that on your face and just breathe and meditate and calm your thoughts it's an absolutely tranquil feeling that it invokes let's take a deep breath sitting in a moment of stillness calm our thoughts open our minds and breathe We have five more compounds to discuss. In later episodes, we'll dive deeper into the eternal attributes as we just did with boronyl acetate, alpha-pinene, beta-pinene, and delta-3 carine. Right now, we'll review base qualities of the next five components, sabine, carine, camaphene, and limonene are our next five components. Sabine is a skin purifying, colorless, bicyclic monoterpene, embodying a woody, spice, peppery aroma, which fights free radicals and is soothing to the skin. Sabine nurtures appearance of skin by abating inflammation and acting as an antimicrobial, antifungal, antioxidant, and antibacterial, heartening growth of collagen which speeds healing by mending skin's structural layer, synergistically effective in abating arthritis and heartening digestion. A prominent component in carrot seed oil attributed to the spiciness of black pepper, also found in nutmeg, basil, majorum, cloves, and cardamom. Another terpene called carine is believed to ease anxiety and insomnia. Having molecules small enough to cross the blood-brain barrier, enabling it to interact with neurotransmitters linked to feelings of stress, acting as a sedative. Also an anti-inflammatory, effective in ameliorating joint pain. The monoterpene camaphene held presence in the journal PLOS-1, therein mentioned to reduce cholesterol and triglycerides when given to mice, an antibacterial, antifungal, antioxidant, and is known to keep insects at bay. Lastly, we have limonene, a terpene, which lends Douglas its citrusy sense that elevates mood and relieves stress, enabling antibacterial and antifungal properties, working synergistically with other terpenes, helping them absorb readily through skin or mucous membranes. That wraps up the chemical constituent section of this podcast. We covered boronyl acetate being powerfully healing to gut microbiota, an anti-inflammatory, and a tranquilizer for the autonomic nervous system. We covered alpha-peonine being anti-inflammatory, skin nourishing, airway cleansing, and neuro-calming effects. Our third terpene was beta-peonine, being a metabolite mood elevator and a skin purifier. Delta-3 carine, elevating mental focus, an antibacterial alleviates inflammation and lends a hand in treating bone diseases. There are many practical ways to utilize all parts of this tree, ranging from the resin, green bark, leaves, sprouts, shoot infusions, the needles, and how to make the essential oils and hydrosols. Douglas fir resin, being antiseptic, is cultivated from the trunk and can be utilized directly on skin as a poultice, treating cuts, burns, wounds, and other skin ailments while stimulating immunity. Being very healing to the lungs and mucous membranes, The resin is chewed to treat cough and sore throats. Bears will scrape bark off the tree to eat sap when food supplies are scarce. Green bark from the tree can be made into infusions used to treat excessive menstruation 
bleeding bowels, and stomach problems. Fresh needles can be utilized as a coffee substitute, tea infusions infused in honey, vinegar, and utilized in flavoring liquors, syrups, and desserts, including ice cream. Infusions are used in baths for skin health and athlete's foot. Finely chopped needles can be infused to make a body butter, lotions, or salves. I am personally absolutely in love with fresh Douglas fir needle tea. The needles can be dried and used later. Being full of vitamin C, hydrating, and healing for the gut. Older needles can make medicine during any season. With age, needles develop more tannins and are less aromatic. Make sure when you're pruning not to harvest too much from one tree. Methodically prune around the tree and go to the next one if you want more. To make a natural lip balm, use half a cup of infused Douglas fir oil, one ounce of beeswax, and 10 drops of Douglas fir essential oil. Gently heat base oil and beeswax until the wax is melted. Remove Add essential oil and pour into a container of your choice. And bam, we have an awesome homemade lip balm. Rosehip seed oil or vitamin E oil can be added. And shea butter can also be added for healing dry and cracked skin. Essential oils are made through steam distillation of the plant material or infusing needles in a carrier oil. The essential oil by itself has a floral, citrus, pine scent that is uplifting to the mind, stimulating to the immune system due to antimicrobial properties. Conjure up an aromatic steam for the lungs by boiling water and using a head towel to trap the steam within the towel and pointing it towards your face. Add a few drops of Douglas fir essential oil and breathing in this steam can help in healing colds, flus, coughs, and bronchitis infections. Use the oil to bring clarity and calm racing thoughts, making it easier to focus. Douglas fir essential oil brings a wonderful experience to shampoos and a nice addition to homemade natural laundry detergent, giving it a light, refreshing, foresty pine aroma while washing clothes. Used externally with a carrier oil can tranquil sore muscles, rheumatoid arthritis, cramping, and swelling. It stimulates blood to travel on skin surface, flushing out toxins, heartening prompt healing, and easing pain and purifying acne-prone skin. Pairing well with citrus oils including grapefruit, wild orange, for added clarity, bergamot, tangerine, and lime. Spicy warm oils pair very well as well, including cinnamon, clove, and nutmeg. Herbal oils including thyme, rosemary, and lavender to invoke a sense of calm. Woody oils such as white fir, cypress, cedarwood, sandalwood, and mint oils like peppermint, spearmint, and wintergreen can help in aiding aching muscles. A byproduct of making the essential oil is a water-soluble mix of all that plant material called hydrosol. Hydrosol is slightly acidic, it has a watery consistency, and is amazing for tightening skin's appearance and reducing production of excessive oil due to its acidic nature. When my skin was producing too much oil, I'd wash my face often to no avail. Upon using hydrosols, the essential oil on my face, acne, and excessive oil production cleared right up for me. Douglas Hydrosol has a gentle aroma that encourages deep breathing. Spray on roots of hair and gently massage, stimulating the scalp. 
don't rinse that out. It's very good for hair. It can ameliorate body odor by misting under their arms or in shoes. Use as a linen refresher on clothes, tapestries, blankets. You can also use it as an air refresher. You can find this hydrosol on a couple different websites that sell essential oils. I also sell my own that I distill to make my own essential oils. So I sell the hydrosol and that is on my website at sunflowerguru.com if you're interested. Reserving many cleansing properties makes Douglas fir an effective natural cleaner. Safe for home use on counters, floors, in the air, on linens, adding lemon essential oil for added purification. Antimicrobial and vermicidal activities of the oil are known to fight bad bacteria, fungi, and worms. So remember, every single year, if you have a Douglas fir Christmas tree in your house, there are many ways the tree can be utilized and cultivated instead of just landing in a landfill. Let's take a deep breath and sit in a moment of stillness. Calm our thoughts, open our minds, and breathe. Now, after all the discussions we've had, how the heck are we supposed to identify Douglas fir in the first place? Good question. Let's get into it. In the pinnacle family, Douglas fir is a conifer species, most common ranging from the Pacific Northwest, Canada, and Southern British Columbia, possessing a narrow pyramid-like pointed crown that flattens with age, soft dark blue needles and slightly drooping branches. The tallest living Douglas fir is 327 feet located in Coos County, Oregon. Reports from logging in the 1900s claim that some Douglas fir trees were over 400 feet tall and could live for up to a thousand years. The only tree taller than Douglas is the coastal redwood. Needles are between three-fourths to one and a fourth inches long, thin, soft, and rounded tips and have two white lines going along the underbelly of each needle. They stick out in all directions like a bottle brush, singularly wrapped around the twig. Being very similar to spruce needles, however, Douglas fir needles are soft and spruce needles are sharp. They smell lightly floral and have citrus tones as grapefruits do when they're crushed. The bud sheaves are reddish brown and papery. The cones are the only cones in the northwest with a three-pointed bracket sticking out from the scales. Female cones have three-pronged brackets resembling a mouse's tail with two little legs. A common Salish story tells long ago mice were running from a fire, diving into Douglas fir cones in search of refuge, and became eternally stuck. Female cones turn upward during pollination, acting as wind turbines, grown to funnel male pollen towards the ovals. When fertilized, the seeds mature, developing a wing enabling them to fall further from the mother tree. Male cones are usually located on the lower half of the tree, are smaller than the females, and produce in spring. After pollination, they're likely to be found by neighboring trees, blown from the wind, creating genetic diversity. If you're walking and notice cones still intact on the ground, there may be a Douglas fir tree nearby. The bark is easily identified with Douglas fir, especially on wiser trees. Young bark is gray, smooth with resin blisters. Mature bark is thick and deeply furrowed, gray to reddish brown, making it the grooviest tree in the forest. Older trees can develop bark nine inches thick 
immune to fast burning fires. Historically, fires were used to balance efforts for populations. A hundred year old burn can still be prevalent on older trees. When it comes to the history of the Douglas fir tree, a Scottish botanist, David Douglas, was a collector of botanical specimens. In 1824, his second expedition to North America's Pacific Northwest, he reported extraordinary nature and potential of Douglas fir. Since 1825, it became significantly utilized in Europe for its fast-growing high wood yield. Widely cultivated by timber companies used for lumber, plywood, pilings, marine structures, railroad ties, flooring, furniture, pulp, and much more. 19 million acres from central British Columbia to Mexico on the east side of the Cascades is covered by Douglas fir forests. Another Scot named Archibald Menzies is honored by the second half of its scientific name, Menzies. Sudotsuka is its first name, meaning false hemlock. Sudotsuka Menzisi is its full name. Botanists often write how Douglas fir is not a true fir. Its scientific name changed 21 times as botanists attempted to determine the correct classification of the species having blisters on the bark like other true firs, but other aspects are quite unique to Douglas. Its cones resemble hemlock or spruce cones more of than fir cones. After much discussion and confusion, since 1867 to 1953, an 86-year stretch, Douglas was finally classified into its own genus, Sudotsuka menzisi. Other common names are Oregon pine, red fir, and red spruce. Any conifer west of the Cascade Summit in Oregon or Washington is more likely a Douglas fir than any other species. It is quite a popular Christmas tree, mostly because it is less expensive to grow than other species. Pacific Northwest Native Americans used resin for waterproofing canoes, tools, and used the wood to craft spears, fishing hooks, harpoon shafts, and tool handles. Rotten bark or stumps of the tree can make excellent fire starter fuel because the wood burns hot and very cleanly. The branches were used as floor cover in structures like sweat lodges. That concludes our episode on the one and only, the heartening, the healing, absolutely astonishing Douglas fir coniferous tree. This has been quite the journey and I eternally pray we find healing in this veritable wonder. Within the depths of our next episode, we'll be talking about a powerful antiviral possessing a deluge of nourishing medicinal benefits, the rhizome ginger. Thank you for joining me, lovelies. I truly appreciate your presence here and hope every episode has a gem that we can utilize in our daily lives. Let's conquer our minds, our health, and climb this beautiful mountain called life. Thank you for listening.